Welcome everyone back to the Crimson 15 Podcast. I'm your host, Crimson 10. David TPCA. Day 454. Be sure to check us out over on Twitter, at C15 Podcast. Join the discussion over on Discord, link in the description below. And if you're enjoying the videos, be sure to sub, like, share, and hit that bell for notifications. X-Men 97, Episode 4. This is a two-part episode, but the two parts have nothing to do with each other. Like, it's like two mini-episodes. Why in the world they did this? I don't know. I'm going to split it in two different reviews because if the two episodes connected in any way, I'll just do one big review, but there couldn't be any more separated. So I got to break it up. I do little tiny reviews and this, this review for this episode, go watch that mini review. That's the whole review. It it is such a waste of an episode. It is a zero out of 10, an absolute zero. Nothing happens. It doesn't matter. No, No cool animation. It's just a bunch of, do you remember when? And I absolutely hate that kind of entertainment. Some people love it. I mean, that's for the, you know, the BuzzFeed crowd and like, remember when arcade games, Nintendo, uh, uh, remember the X-Men arcade machine? That That's the whole episode. It's beyond ridiculous. But uh, it's called Motendo, you know, like Mojo mixed with Nintendo, Motendo. And if that isn't getting you laughing and grabbing your sides, then you're you're not going to like this episode. Uh, we open up with, uh, you know how they've, they've been pushing this whole Magneto Rogue thing? So Gambit's like, hey, you know, Rogue, I made you some coffee. Oh, you're already late. Magneto already made me some. And then he's like, they're kind of like throwing shade at each other. <laughs> okay. But uh, I guess it's Jubilee's birthday. So like, hey, instead of like, or it's, it's it's her 18th birthday too. So it's a big birthday. You know, it's a, that's a big date. And Magneto's like, and so... She should be training, you know. She'll have many more birthdays if she learns how to control her powers correctly. But she's like, oh, I want to go to the arcade. And then, of course, no way Magneto's going to the arcade. How funny would it have been if the episode ended, you know, with them going to the arcade and and Magneto's just standing in the corner somewhere? How funny. That would have been amazing. Nope, they don't do anything like that. She's in her room with uh, Sunspot complaining about video games. Like, I can't believe uh, Magneto doesn't want to give me one day and I hate him and he's, he sucks. Y- you know, all that kind of like, I don't like listening to him. But he's kind of being a hard ass. I understand Jubilee here. Then they start talking about video games. And she's like, oh, look, look at this system. I've never had this before. And of course, he doesn't like video games. He's one of those guys that's, uh, I'm too busy dating girls and spending money to be playing video games. So it's like, oh no, we're going to check it out. And if you look closely, it's a... Sega Genesis with the cover of X-Men Mutant Apocalypse, which was a Super Nintendo game, not a Sega Genesis game. See, this is where you make this nostalgia stuff for people like me. I grew up with this stuff. I bought these games when they were brand new. So you got to get everything right. And they get everything wrong. So whatever. They they fire it up. Uh, they get pulled into the world. I guess they're still physically laying on the bed. They just get like, infected in the way that, she, that Jubilee looks right now. For those who don't know, I've had double detached retinas and I've had sur- multiple surgeries on my eyes. I lost sight in my left eye. So I'm a one-eyed, one-eyed bandit. But to know what it feels like visually to get this surgery, that's what it looks like. <laughs> that's what it feels like. But um, yeah, uh, highly unrecommended. Do not get detached retinas. It's not fun. Get your eyeballs checked out, guys, because you can't feel it. And you don't know you have it till it's happening. So always get checked out once a year. Anyways, we jump in and they're like, oh man, what happened? We must have been playing games a long time. They get attacked by a Sentinel, but they're already downtown. And they're like, well, how did we get down here? And for, they think it's reality. But as it goes on, you can kind of tell that this is like really goofy and silly. Because uh, he doesn't want to use his powers. I don't want anyone to see I got powers because my, my grandma would beat my ass. Uh, they end up there like in Genosha now. And there's a bunch of guys that look like Boba Fett. <laughs> I don't remember this. We see this kind of like futuristic punk person. I thought it was long shot because the spikes and the black thing. But I'm like, wait a minute, this thing has boobs. But you can barely tell. But I'm like, okay, that can't be long shot unless it's like a female long shot. But nope, it's not that. And she's starting to realize, hey, we're, we're like in a video game. And then we see Mojo and he's like super skinny. I don't like his voice. I, From my recollection, his voice was a little more monstrous and not so mega nerd. You know that nerd guy from Teen Titans? The guy with the, 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 he's like a TV control, TV master, remote master guy. He kind of has that kind of vibe about him. 
which Mojo kind of really didn't have that vibe, but he like is kind of skinny, but he's still fat. You know, when like there's a person who used to weigh like 600 pounds and lost a lot of weight and he still have all that skin. That's what he looks like now. But I guess his whole thing is TV's not doing as well as it used to. I'm transitioning to video games and the X-Men have been very popular for me. So I want to have it be like a live video game. I don't know how that's any different from a TV show because the people are just watching it, not playing it. So how's it a video game? It, the whole concept makes zero sense because wouldn't making games would be for everyone to play, not for you to see someone pretend to play in a, in a, in a video game. I guess it's like the beginning of streaming, like watching a streamer, but it's a, it's a big video game. And we see that he's like setting things up and you get a lot of this kind of nostalgia stuff. Like look at this, this opener. And it looks like if they took Ninja Turtles and mixed it with the X-Men game, because the, the character designs are way too chibi and cartoony looking. That's more Ninja Turtles, like the Ninja Turtles arcade game. But all the backgrounds are 100% out of the X-Men arcade game. Why did he go with this really cartoony chibi style? I have no idea. They should have just went with the actual art style that was in the actual ar arcade game and it would have looked way better, but they went with this silly, goofy style. I don't get it. So if you're trying to please me, the person who literally grew up with this stuff, you didn't do it. So we know it's a video game. We know it's not real. We know there's no one on earth that can see this. Sunspot still doesn't want to use his powers because he doesn't want anyone to know he has powers. Homie, you're going to die. Like, you don't care. So it just goes through a bunch of nostalgia stuff like this, but I guess as more people are watching, Mojo gets fat again because like he feeds off of the ratings. I don't know if that's canon or not. I don't know Mojo all that well, but he's a big fat guy now again. And... Yeah, so they've been going through these levels and they're kind of having fun. But then we get this whole like, I never knew. The, there's this weird concept in this episode where Jubilee is like, oh, having fun and stuff, but doesn't want to grow up. But she wanted to celebrate her 18th birthday. So that is growing up. But then they say she doesn't want to grow up and never wants things to change. It's just weird. It's just this weird conflict that doesn't exist. It didn't exist in the prior episodes. It didn't exist in this episode. What's this weird thing where she doesn't want to grow up? Like, wh where's that even coming from? But they're fighting Magneto because Magneto was the final boss in the, the arcade game. And um, Sunspike gets kind of knocked out. So he's dying. Then, you know, she starts fighting him. And throughout this whole thing that that one person has been helping. We don't know who it is. But the spiky leather person's helping out. And they get a one up. And like gives it to him and brings him back to life. Because that that's how it works. <laughs> it's just, they didn't have that in the game. They had little energy orbs. Here's the funny thing. You could set the game to different things. Like th there's something called dip switches back in arcade machines where you can change difficulties, how much, you know, uh, life you get on a credit. Like, because there's different versions of the X-Men ar arcade game where you had, uh, you can use your mutant power, which is like a big power attack. Some games made it to where you lost life when you used it. Other games, you had actual, like, uh, like a gauge. So you can use it three or four times in one level without losing any health. So there's different, those kinds of things, but there never was a pick up a one free guy. Like, that That wasn't a thing. Anyways, she brings it back to life, and uh, we get an error, and we see that that person pulled them through. And I'm like, okay, who the hell is this person? It's older Jubilee, which is actually played by the original voice actress, which is kind of nice. But we see that it's an old Jubilee. And I'm like, okay, how does this make any sense? This is their explanation. Maybe someone out there, please tell me, how does this make any sense? They had a beta test the game. How does anyone beta test a side scroll and beat him up? I don't know how long that process takes, but it, it shouldn't be 90, 80 years. Because <laughs> this is like old lady Jubilee, like at least in her 70s. So they've been beta testing this game for 50 years. Okay. Um, so she's like, I've been playing this game nonstop, but I know it's really fun to know what everything that's going to happen and relieve the gory days. But, you know, you have to grow up. Again, reinforcing this weird idea that Jubilee never wanted to grow up. Where was this? This this concept? Where, where is this coming from? When did Jubilee go, oh, no, I don't ever want to grow up. When When was that ever a thing? It's... I don't know. I'm crazy. But then Mojo breaks through and he's a final boss of the, the whole game now. 
And then, so we have old Jubilee doing all these really cool moves. And then young Jubilee's like, oh, wow, we can do that. We can do a lot more than that, sweetheart. Two, second question. Um, What's the deal with her learning how to use new powers? So this clone isn't like a genetic clone. It's just like a digitized version of her. So how would it know the limits of its own powers? Like, how is that even possible? It's just like a snapshot of... Like, how does it evolve and grow and have feelings? That doesn't make any sense. This whole episode makes no good sense. So she's doing all this really cool stuff. And then I guess Jubilee kind of learns about that. Like, oh, cool. I can do these kinds of cool things, too. I'm glad Sunspot decides to use his powers a little bit instead of just being a dummy and, like, letting himself get killed. They beat they beat him. Then Spiral, the, the girl with all the arms, she's in the X-Men show in the Atom arcade game which just got re-announced for the switch uh, during the nintendo press conference thingy they have a game showcase and they're going to be releasing all the capcom versus games so street fighter vs x-men x-men children of the atom marvel superheroes all those games are coming out and she was a character in the original children of the, uh, of the atom super awesome love it so much uh, they get out of the game and then they kiss and that's the end of the episode what what the hell was this even about the, i guess jubilee learned some new moves from a computer beta tester version that was sped up in time like it can't be in real time because how she is old as she is none of this makes any sense it, it, my head my brain is like feeling like i missed something like there was a secret episodes i'd missed that it justify anything that just happened anyways what a crappy episode zero out of ten i don't like things that end the way they began we nothing was gained nothing was lost AKA a complete waste of my freaking time. Anyways, there's a second uh, episode of this, which is much better to do with Storm and Forge. I'll cover that in another episode. Uh, thanks for watching, guys. Comments, likes, shares, likes, all that stuff helps out. Follow on TikTok, on uh, the YouTube shorts. I do post a little mini reviews beforehand. And usually the next day, this ep this uh, review will be up. Thank you so much, guys. Try to get that. You know, I'm stuck around 7,000 subs. Like I can't ever get out of that thing i go up i go down i go up i go down so keep sharing keep liking stop doing all you know don't stop doing all that cool stuff thank you so much love you guys catch you on the next one crimson's in here thanks for watching the video remember liking subscribing sharing and commenting on the video really helps out a lot it gets the video spread around more more people get to see the videos and we get to make more videos for you guys so thank you and we appreciate every single one of you guys